Why should singles delay CPP until age 70? How should you deal with paying higher taxes? Who says travel just has to be for couples? How can you cope with the loneliness that comes with navigating retirement solo? These are just a few of the questions we'll be answering today as we focus on 12 challenges that are unique to singles in retirement. As always, it's your favourite Scotsman here to guide you through them. Now, here's a statistic that might just knock your socks off. Did you know that as per the last census, about 43% of Canadians are single, divorced or widowed? That's a hefty chunk of you doing this retirement voyage alone. So, whether you've already hung up your work boots or you're just beginning to map out your retirement strategy, this video is for you. Alright, let's jump into challenge number one for all the single retirees out there. This one's a biggie. You've got just one set of government benefits to rely on. Yep, just one CPP and one old age security. So getting a grip early on how these work is more than just a good idea. It's crucial. Let's talk CPP. You need to do a wee bit of homework here. I will leave the number in the show notes, but contact Service Canada to find out how much you'll receive and most critically, Talk to your financial planner to understand when it makes the most sense for you to begin. Don't just take CPP at age 60 because it becomes available to you then. You know, if you're in good health, generally delaying CPP all the way up to age 70 makes the most sense, especially for singles. I won't get into it in huge detail in this video, but do check out my other videos on the topic. But the math is it's pretty straightforward. And there's something that has to be said for having the comfort of a guaranteed indexed pension. Then there's old age security. You don't get this until age 65, but you can play the waiting game until age 70 if you want, like CPP. You don't get as much of an advantage from delaying OAS, but there are enough reasons to consider it if you're in good health. Your call really depends on your other assets and your cash flow. Now, stay tuned for a surprising tip on delaying government benefits and tax savings that most singles overlook. I'll reveal it later in the video, but this can be a game changer for maximising what ends up in your pocket and stays out the hands of the CRA. Alright, moving on. Let's dive into the second challenge on our list. This one's all about the tax man. Did you know, as a single retiree, you're likely to pay more in taxes compared to your married counterparts. That's right, from our experience couples frequently dance around an average tax rate of 8-12% to in retirement, while you, my single friends, could be looking at rates from 14-20%. to Hardly ideal. Now, you might be wondering why. It's mainly because couples can, you know, do this trick that they call income splitting. As a solo act, Obviously, you don't have a partner to dance with, which often means a higher tax tab. But don't let you get that down. Here's where a good financial planner comes in. With the right amount of forethought, it's possible to lessen the load. I have done a bunch of other videos on this topic, so I won't go into it in, in too much detail, but whether it's optimising your withdrawal strategy, maximising all the available credits and deductions, or a charitable donation strategy, there's plenty to think about. So reach out to your planner and ask what you can be doing today. Of course, if you don't have one, then feel free to reach out to us and we'll make sure you're pointed in the right direction, whether that's working with us or someone else. Moving on to challenge number three. This one's a bit of a double-edged sword. The need to downsize and the importance of picking the right community. Now, as a single person, you might find yourself pondering the idea of downsizing or moving into a retirement community a bit earlier than couples do, often around your mid-70s. But here's the thing. This decision is about so much more than just trading a larger house for a smaller one. It's about making sure you land in a community that supports you, not just now, but well into the future. Imagine a place where everything you need is just a short walk away. Healthcare, in-home care, maybe even a nice little cafe for your morning coffee. 
Choosing a community like this isn't just a practical move, it's a lifestyle choice that can seriously boost your quality of life as you advance in years. It's about finding a spot that's not only comfortable and convenient, but also gives you a chance to be part of a vibrant social scene. Because, let's face it, good neighbours and easy access to what matters can make all the difference in the world. Very quick break here. If you're enjoying today's video, consider hitting that subscribe button. Okay, back to what you came for. Alright, moving on to our fourth challenge for single retirees. I'm doing this, but I'm going to run out of numbers soon, uh, so anyway. Uh, getting your hands on the guaranteed income supplement. Here's the rub. It's a tougher nut to crack for singles compared to couples. Why? Well, couples have a higher income threshold, and as we've just touched on, they have the uncanny ability to split their income. This means if you're single and your income is a smidgen over the line, you might miss out on the GIS. A hurdle less likely for couples who can juggle their finances to fit within the limits. Now, on to our fifth pointer, and it's a big one. Financial education. When you're part of a duo, often one plays the role of the financial guru, managing the budget and the nitty gritty of money matters. But as a solo player, the entire financial playbook falls into your lap. From navigating retirement planning to understanding the CPP and OAS to RRSP to RIF conversions, it's all on you. Having a sharp financial planner in your corner is vital, but so is arming yourself with financial smarts. Think about finding a mentor or a trusted confidant who can help elevate your financial savvy. Have you experienced this challenge? Share your story in the comments below. And here we are at challenge number six. Emotional loneliness and its sneaky sidekick. Increased spending. It's a sad but true fact. Many cut singles grapple with loneliness. And there's plenty of data showing that feelings of isolation can lead to splashing out more cash than is intended. Be vigilant about this. Consider embedding yourself in a community, joining groups that hold you accountable, or setting up a structure in your life to keep emotional spending at bay. Remember, unchecked emotional spending can quickly throw your retirement plans off track, so seeking support when needed is more than just a good idea. It's essential. All right, moving on to challenge number seven. It's about safeguarding your future in two crucial aspects setting up a power of attorney and having a long-term care plan. Firstly, the power of attorney isn't just a box to tick, it's a lifeline. As a single person, it's critical to have someone you trust to step in and make financial and health decisions for you if you're unable to do so. Get this set up with your lawyer sooner rather than later. It's one of those things that's better to have years early than a day late. Dovetailing into this is the importance of a long-term care plan. Who's going to be in your corner if you need care down the line? This isn't the most comfortable chat to have, but it's a crucial one. Make sure your POA knows exactly what your preferences are for end-of-life wishes and care plans. For single retirees, these decisions and discussions, you know, they, they might seem daunting. and There's no spouse or partner to bounce these ideas off, but, but think of it as building a safety net ensuring your wishes and well-being are in good hands, no matter what the future holds. Just a reminder, don't forget about the tip earlier regarding delaying government benefits for tax savings. It's a strategy that many singles overlook, but it can have a significant impact in how much money you keep for yourself. I'll be revealing this soon, so stay tuned. Moving on to challenge number eight. It's all about ensuring you have a reliable safety net in place. Someone to regularly check in on you. Now, let's get real. As we age, the importance of having someone pop in and make sure everything's all right can be overstayed. I've seen it firsthand with our clients. It's even more vital for singles. Accidents, as we all know, can happen in the blink of an eye. Having someone, you know, be it a family member, or a neighbor, or a friend committed to keeping an eye on you can be the difference between life and death. And speaking of safety nets, Consider personal alarm systems. These gadgets, like wearable alarms that go around your wrist or neck, are more than just fancy tech. They're potential lifesavers. If you take a tumble, they automatically signal for emergency assistance. 
My grandmother, may she rest in peace, had one until she sadly passed away. It's a comfort knowing that help is just a button press away. Moving on to challenge number nine. The myth that being single means you can't travel or live life to the fullest. Nonsense. I'm only gonna shatter this misconception right here and now. Being solo shouldn't be a barrier to exploring the world. In fact, there's heaps of solo travel opportunities out there. Just recently, one of our single clients had a blast on a cruise with four friends. There's a whole world of options for you, from bike tours to cruises and more. Remember, those go-go years of retirement aren't endless, so grab your suitcase, your sense of adventure, and make the most out of every moment. Moving on to number 10, battling loneliness can sneak up in the early days of retirement. It's a common feeling, whether you're single or not. Missing the daily banter and camaraderie of work is normal, but how about some part-time work or volunteering? Putting in 10 or 20 hours a week can help you feel connected, give you a sense of purpose, and ease the transition from full-time work into retirement. It's about keeping that sense of community alive. And then there's the option of a furry friend. Yes, I'm talking about pets, especially dogs. They offer way more than just wagon tails and park walks. The psychological benefits are huge. Constant companionship and emotional support, it's all there. I always ask my wife why she doesn't give me the same welcome home from work as my dog Archie does. No matter what has happened that day, your dog will always greet you with the same enthusiasm and love. Now for challenge number 11, let's chat about something that's a bit of a tough nut to crack, especially during those long Canadian winters when stepping outside feels more like a polar expedition than a leisurely stroll. Well, it wasn't too bad this year, to be honest. But here's the thing. Maintaining your health is a key player in enjoying a long and vibrant retirement. We're talking about a trifecta here. Nourishing your body with wholesome meals, staying active and keeping your brain engaged. It's like tuning a classic car. It runs best when everything is in top shape. Now on to a bit of a secret weapon against the blues and stress. Mother Nature. Ever heard the saying, there's no such thing as bad weather, only unsuitable clothing? Well, there's a grain of truth to that. Staying home, numbing the mind with nonsense on TV and being inactive are all ways to, well, increase the risk of, well, let's be honest, checking out early. So, it's crucial to make a habit of connecting with the great outdoors, whether that's a leisurely walk in the park or just you know, sitting in your back garden, you know, and enjoying a bit of fresh air and greenery can work wonders for your well-being. Think of it as your daily dose of natural medicine. So, wrap up warm, step outside, and let Mother Nature do her thing. All right, remember the game-changing tip I mentioned earlier. Well, let's zero in on the last challenge for my single retirees, mastering the RRSP decumulation strategy. You don't have the same flexibility as couples, but it can be absolutely done. If you retire early, considering withdrawing from your RRSP before you start receiving CPP and OAS benefits. This can help reduce your overall tax burden by spreading out your taxable income over more years, potentially keeping you in a lower tax bracket. This strategy can be particularly effective if you have a gap between your retirement date and when your government benefits begin. The goal, to even out your tax bill throughout retirement years and maximize what you're leaving to your loved ones. How does it work? That is a whole other video in itself, but lucky for you, it is queued up and ready to go. If you found today's video helpful, why not give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, and remember, a good financial planner understands your goals, but a great one knows the motivations behind them.